Hello and welcome back to Catch and Cook California. Today is the solo 24 hour riverine survival challenge. On this challenge, I have to bring only five items, two of which have to be a tarp and cord. From that, I have to make a canoe, paddle downstream, disassemble the boat, turn it into a shelter. I have to try and gather, hunt, or fish all of my own food. I have no sleeping pad, I have no sleeping bag, and I have no tent. And it's gonna be fun, so stick with us. Alive. 11.28, okay. I'm filming on the iPhone, but I only use that to film if you're new to the channel. That's my real phone. So anyway, 11.28, I have to survive until 11.28 tomorrow. Do you think I'll do it? <laughs> 24 hour survival, I could pretty much just sit here for 24 hours and I'd probably be fine. But there's no fun in that. So instead, we're gonna have to forage and fish and catch and cook and build a shelter. And in order to do any of this, the first thing I have to do is build a canoe. So first things first, I need to get my framework together for my canoe, but I wanna show you what I brought. Um, five items, that's all I get. This is what I got. I've got a little fishing kit here, just set up in a little Altoids tin. That's one of my items. Got a knife brother made me birch bark handle really nice bushcraft knife got some cordage um, I ha have about like 30 feet here um, I would like 50 but this is what I had on me so hopefully that's enough and the tarp the tarp will be the backbone of the boat well not the backbone it'll be the skin of the boat and then we'll make a, a backbone or framework out of willows and then the tarp can also double as a shelter um, in addition I got a couple of jackets just to stay warm because I don't have a sleeping bag. Priority one is to make a boat. So I need to cut some willows. That's exactly what I plan on doing. Check out all these butterflies. That's pretty cool. Butterflies everywhere. Man, I'm already sweating. It's always best if you can keep from sweating when you think you're gonna be sleeping in your clothes because you don't want them drenched, but it's like 90 degrees out here. So anyway, found a good spot in the shade. I think this will be a good spot to work. You turn these little willow saplings. I just cut with the knife and that's gonna become the framework of our boat. It is hot, man. This whole thing can be done with just natural materials if you have an animal skin that you can stretch over it, um, if you wanna make the cordage and all that. But cordage is costly. You saw that video where we made the uh, Thule canoe with all stone tools and we made all that cattail cordage to lash it together. The most costly uh, time expenditure in that entire process was making cordage. So it's definitely not quick to do. This is sort of bushcraft style, right? Bring a couple things, use your bushcraft knowledge and make something cool. So I'm just going to wrap around a few times. I put a little slip knot on there. I'm going to run through the middle here. And that is going to really lock this knot down and hopefully keep the boat together. All right, so I've lashed together one main rounded beam here. This is going to be the cross section of the actual boat. Um, I just use a forked willow stick so it's kind of friction fit on this side I think I'm gonna reinforce that with a little bit of cordage and then I just lashed them together on the other side and the beauty of willow I guess I should tell you oh yeah I had to take my shirt off it is really really hot beauty of willow is when it's green it's very very flexible so it's very easy to manipulate so I can bend it any which way I want 
to make the shape that I need, and that's one of those things I really like about willow. That's why willow was ethnographically used over and over again to make basketry among many indigenous peoples. So far so good. Now, we just need that main beam. Framework is done. Check it out. Pretty simple. So now we just need to stretch the uh, tarp over it. <laughs> Doesn't look like a boat yet. Let's make it happen though. Starting to look boat-ish, but definitely not a boat yet. So now, man, I'm still sweating. I'm gonna have to hang my shirt out to dry in the sun, but luckily it's hot, so it should dry before I gotta sleep in it. You don't wanna go to bed in sweaty clothes. Hypothermia. Okay, now what we need is a whole bunch of little ash or willow saplings. And we're gonna start laying them down inside here. And that's gonna basically bulk up the whole the hull of the boat and it's gonna give it more reinforcement, more structure. And the more of these little folds and such we can get out of the out of the actual keel and hull of the boat, the better it's gonna track. So it'll allow us to paddle more efficiently. Make sure you don't have any sharp ends. We don't want to puncture the hole. I am not 100% convinced that I'm not getting wet today. That's why it's important to get this thing done early. And then uh, if it does leak, then hopefully we have enough time to dry our clothes before we gotta go to sleep. Well, it's a bushcraft boat. So I would say if I was gonna change anything well, there's a few things I've already learned. This is my first try ever doing this. Oh yeah, I'm in my shorts because one, getting in and out of the boat definitely takes on a little bit of water. Two, I would make it a little bit longer. The tarp's long enough that I could have made it longer. I just assumed that about a seven foot boat would have been enough. I think nine foot would make it track a lot better and it would also probably make getting in and out better and it would have more freeboard. Um, the first time I took it out, the uh, keel was not really deep enough, so I had to undo the whole boat, which was, well, almost the whole boat, which was kind of sad, um, and extend the keel and bend it so it was a little bit deeper. And that way, it would have more buoyancy. Now I've got about, oh, three inches of freeboard on the back. If I was sitting closer to the middle, it would be even better. Um, I would also say that if I'm going to bring five items, I wouldn't bring a knife, I'd bring a hatchet. Um, I know that that might sound crazy to some people, but with a hatchet, it'd be real easy to rough out a paddle. Instead, I'm just dealing with a stick. I was thinking of pulling this thing along, just pushing off the bottom, but as I did that, it was just turning like circles. So really using it kind of like a kayak paddle is a better way to go. So I would say definitely in the future a hatchet so that I could rough out a paddle because this is a lot of work. Um, it doesn't track great, but it's also not too bad. I mean, I'm probably moving about a third of the speed I'd be moving in the canoe, but that's bushcraft, right? And that's something else. So this has been going in my head over and over again today. Bushcraft is all about patience. The moment you try to rush something, that's when you get hurt or you mess up. So if you think about bushcraft in terms of survival or basically making a home in the woods using just what's uh, in your brain and some limited materials, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. So, you know, if you put the boat in the water and you have one inch freeboard, as disappointing as that might be, just take it back out, make your modifications. You know, it may take another half an hour or so, and then you have a boat that works. So remember that. Bushcraft is all about patience. All right guys, so I was trying to fish um, earlier and I was using the paddle or the paddle stick 
and it was really heavy and awkward. So I just found myself a little piece of river cane. Stuff is all over the place down here. Tied up my little Texas rig. I don't know if you can see that. Ooh. Makes me want to bite it. Anyway, there's a spot just down here I'm going to give a shot. See if I can catch a bass. Let's go. I've jigged in this way many times with an artificial worm and I've had really good success here for bass. But as much as I tried this day, I simply had no luck. Trying to dry my clothes before dark, that way I'm not getting hypothermic. A little later on I hopped out of the boat and uh, when I was editing the video, this is when I realized I actually never got a shot from shore of paddling this boat. So hopefully from these shots you can see what the boat looked like, the willow framework on the interior, um, as well as all these willow saplings that are lining the, the interior of the hole. Next time I'll try to get those shots from shore as well. Uh, yeah, no luck fishing, but I did end up finding some Himalaya blackberries and so I got a lot of sugar and nutrients out of those. They were really, really tasty, perfectly ripe. No luck fishing. That's uh, the biggest skunk I've had fishing out here in a long time. I think since I started fishing this spot. Got a couple bites, but nothing big. I don't know, saw a bunch of massive carp, but tried to close the gap, sharpen up a piece of cane to you know, stab them and uh, no luck there. So I've eaten about 30 blackberries, nice and sweet, perfectly uh, ripe. So there's a lot of sugar, a lot of carbohydrates. I'm feeling just fine. So I took the skin off of the canoe. You can see here, I ran out of cordage like I said earlier. I would have loved to have had 50 feet, but instead all I had was 25. So these are my boot laces. So I had to tie the last little beam in there with boot laces. So I'm gonna take that off now, lace up my boots, and then, um, oh yeah, so I'm wearing the beanie because, dumb dumb, it was at the bottom of my bag and the bag got wet. So my beanie is wet. So I'm trying to dry it out. Your body's 98.6, so that's like a hot day, right? So hopefully my body heat can dry this out a little bit. I've only got about 45 minutes of light um, before sunset, so that means really more like an hour and 15 minutes of light. So I gotta make some kind of shelter. I'm trying to sort of air out my uh, tarp over here make sure it's dry-ish. I need to set up a bed here. Uh, remember, if you lay down on the ground, um, the ground is just gonna suck your body heat away. So we need to build up a bunch of, you know, saplings, leaves, those types of things. And remember, you wanna gather about three times as much as you think you need, because when you lay on it, it's all gonna compress and you need some kind of insulation between you and the ground, or like I said, the earth will just suck your body heat away. There it is, the true California king. <laughs> That's my bed. Now I gotta set up a tarp over the top. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna use the frame of the boat for the frame of the shelter. And you can't even see it. Well, I guess I'll have to show you the shelter in the morning. Anyway, not the best shelter I ever made. I think in retrospect I probably wouldn't have used the same beams that I used for the canoe. I just didn't want them to go to waste. So. Yeah, it's all good. I'm gonna throw the uh, tarp on there and I'll show you in the morning. This is the sound outside my shelter. Good morning. It was a long night. It was not really very cold. In the beginning, <clears throat> got a little cold toward the morning, but not too bad. Um, the bedding was good, I'd say about three quarters of the night, and then it got a little bit flattened out, a little hard. Um, I'd say it probably only slept maybe three hours. But <sighs> it didn't really matter. It's actually really nice out here. Like even when I wasn't sleeping, I was just relaxing, listening to crickets. So, it's the first time I've done this without 
any blankets or anything like that without a pad actually first time I've ever done that so I've learned a lot and like I said I did bring mosquito net because there are just too many mosquitoes down here and they carry some nasty stuff my brother's jacket that he made me that definitely helped keep me pretty warm oh. There it is. Nothing too fancy. It sure did work. Obviously, I wouldn't have made it like that if uh, I was planning on it raining. But there was no chance of rain last night. So, the main thing, my main concern was one, making sure that I was throwing down some mosquito net, trying to keep them out. And two, just creating um, nice kind of crisp edges to keep the wind out so that I can stay insulated. Don't judge me on this shelter. <laughs> but as far as an expedient shelter, you know, for not use in the rain, just for use like this, it's not bad. I gotta stay out here till 1132, what was it? 24 hours. I'm gonna wash up a little bit I can see there's blackberries over here and there's blackberries over here. There's the shelter. And there is a bunch of blackberries. Tell you what, I didn't catch any fish, but I'm pretty stoked to see that the Himalaya blackberries are in full swing. That's pretty awesome. Oh my God. Mm. That's the taste of childhood right there. Oh, it's like the perfect sweet and tart. They're perfectly ripe right now. Oh my God, look at all of them. Mm. I once saw an old bumper sticker that said, vegetarian an old Indian word for bad hunter I like to tease my vegetarian friends but um, that's how it is today I tried fishing I tried I tried I tried no luck it's crazy I usually hammer bass in here but I am convinced I can catch a fish <sighs> eating those berries it's like pure energy don't get me wrong I could definitely use a cup of coffee right about now but they're really good so here's a close up. This is the Himalaya blackberry leaf. So it's the non-native berry. It's got a much larger thorn here. Um, the native berry is more needle-like. And then the leaf itself, it'll be arranged in these five leaf arrangements. And um, it's gonna be broader, so almost round, with this little pointed tip down here and obviously serrated. So yeah, if you see these, they're everywhere, but it's one of those that I consider a welcome guest. I mean, what the heck? Yeah, it's a little prickly, but that breakfast is amazing. So I broke camp, uh, waded across the river, and I know I should have filmed that. Why didn't I film that? I wish I had, because there was a, uh, I think it was a fisher, like a black, kind of weaselly looking animal, probably about 10 pounds and he was just walking along the bank fishing looking for you know crowd ads or whatever it's pretty cool to see and I came across a little group of wild turkeys and then I realized I should probably get the camera out in case I see something else so I'm gonna be quiet now keep walking and if I see something I'll show you I don't know if you can see that but there's bluegills sitting right there or some kind of sunfish there's a ton of them check them out They're coming in hot and heavy because I just stirred up the the sand here, that's a decent size. If I could catch one of those, I'll eat it for sure. So the reason they're coming in hot and heavy is I just dug through the gravel and found some of these freshwater invasive Asian clams. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack these, put them on a really small hook, toss them into that school and see if I can catch them. So I just used my knife to open up the clam. It's got a little bit of clam goodie in there. 
I'm running an absolutely tiny hook with a single split shot on there. I'm just gonna hand line it, see if we can't catch one of these bluegill. Fish on. Look at that. <laughs> it's a baby bass. Look at that. In just a second. Fish on. Right. I mean, come on. We're going to throw that back. If it was a bluegill, I would have kept it. That's pretty cool. I don't know if you can see that. Got two more clams. I'm going to pop those open. We're going to cast back out. Yes, yes, this is what I should have been doing all along. Look at that. All right, that's a bluegill. Catch and cook, baby. I don't care if it's small. I've got a half an hour to make a little fire, cook this up. Hope you guys can see what I'm doing. These are those thistle heads I was talking about. Got a nice cleared area here. A good spot for a little fire. These guys take a spark real easy. Theoretically. Chopsticks, baby. Very simple. Just putting it right on the coals. My dad was in Hawaii a long time ago, and uh, he speared some fish and brought them into the shore. And this Hawaiian guy was watching him, and he starts trying to make a grill out of like sticks or something. And the Hawaiian guy's like, "No, no, no! Check it out!" And he just threw the fish right on the fire. My dad's like, "What?" So. Here we go. I'm going to cook one side, I'll flip it over, start eating that side, and then I'm going to cook the other side as, as I'm eating the first side. Beautiful. Discrete fire, we got water right here. If this runs out, we can fill that up and pour it back on. So I'm going to brush away the coals from the top here and lift up the skin, see if we can uh, have ourselves a taste test. Oh yeah, fin came straight off, that's a good sign. Whew. Eyeballs all gooey, that's a good sign. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's beautiful. Perfectly white, flaky meat, still nice and juicy. Ready to go. Look at that. Mm, mm, mm. Yep. I'm eating. I'm hungry. 24 hours, and this is my first meal other than blackberries. Man, I am so grateful for this little bluegill. I'll tell you that much. Oh, man, that meat is perfectly cooked. Oh, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, little bluegill. Oh, dude, this is so good. Mmm, 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 mmm. Dude, it doesn't even need salt. And <laughs> it's 11:06. I don't know if you could see that. That means I started, I think, at 11:25. So I have 19 minutes to eat this fish. 
And uh, like I said in the beginning, if I didn't catch and cook something, then I was gonna have to do this over again. Mm. Anyway, I wanna do this over again. Leave a comment if you wanna see us do an ocean one as well. My brother and I have been talking about doing that with Martin for a while. Spearfishing, living off the land, or maybe just, uh, yeah, survival kits. Very, very basics. And, uh, you know, see what kind of delicious feast we can cook up at the beach. Because when the tide is out, the table is set. Mmm, mmm. Pretty cool how easily that cooked, right? Like, the skin wasn't even burned. And the meat was perfect, perfectly flaking off the bone. Perfectly, perfectly cooked. The spine just came right out. Only left one little rib bone behind. If my life depended on it, and I was in a riverine environment like this, slow moving water, I would go for bluegill every time. I mean, the second that bait hit the water, boom, fish on. Bass, on the other hand, at least the big ones, I was jigging for a long time with those, you know, artificial worms. Usually I do really well, and the payoff is a lot bigger because it's a bigger fish, but I think you can catch 20 of these before you catch one of those. And these are good eating white fish. I'm enjoying every second of this. This is really good. <laughs> mm. I would have been good. Mm, mm, mm. With no food, just the blackberries. But man, this is a treat. Oh my god. Mm. All right, guys. There it is. Catch and cook. 24 hour riverine survival challenge. Complete. Five items. Tarp, string, barrel rod, knife, survival fishing kit. The rules are simple. You have to make a boat using that tarp and that cord. You have to make a shelter using that, that tarp and that cord. You have to catch and cook something. It doesn't have to be a fish. And as a matter of fact, let's say we can forage and cook. That way all the vegans, vegans and vegetarians can be involved as, as well. There's a lot of these bushcrafters out there that just don't eat fish and that's cool. So, those are the rules. 24 hours, have fun and be safe. Wear a life vest, I didn't do that. Wear a life vest. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, let us know what you wanna see us do in the future. Share it, subscribe, and until next time, keep the old ways alive. Here's your outtakes. Just put out the fire. <laughs> 11, 13. Wow. 12 minutes to spare. I think that counts. Right after I ate my bluegill, look at the size of this bass cruising through here. Dude, that thing is massive. Anyway, that's my lot in life. Oh yeah, by the way, that's chicory. You can roast the root and apparently it makes like a coffee substitute. Of course, I'm American. I don't think there is any substitute for coffee. <laughs>